It started as a joke. It always does. When you're hiking deep in the woods with friends, it's hard not to laugh off strange sounds, spooky shapes, or fleeting shadows. After all, who believes in monsters anymore? We didn't. But we should have. We had planned this trip for months, me, Mia, Jordan, and Ethan. The four of us had been inseparable since high school, and with our busy college schedules, we needed this weekend getaway to the mountains. A few days in the woods, campfires, beers, and the kind of dumb fun only lifelong friends can have together. The area was known for its dense forests and rocky cliffs, with hiking trails that led to pristine lakes and stunning views. But it was also isolated, far from any town or help, should we need it. The first couple of days went off without a hitch. We set up camp near a clearing, surrounded by towering pines. At night, we roasted marshmallows, told ghost stories, and tried to scare each other with tales of cryptids that supposedly haunted the region. Mia had heard rumors from her uncle about a creature in these woods, but none of us took it seriously. We were more concerned about running out of beer than some mythical monster. Then, on the third day, we saw it. We were on a trail heading back from a morning hike when Mia stopped dead in her tracks. Look, she whispered, pointing ahead. At first, we thought it was a large, stray animal, a raccoon or maybe a bear cub. But as we squinted through the underbrush, it became clear that this was something different. Very different. The creature was about three feet tall, covered in thick, fluffy brown fur. It had a round body with four stubby legs that gave it an almost cartoonish waddle. Two arms, much longer than its legs, dangled awkwardly at its sides. And its face, its face was bizarrely cute. Huge, round eyes dominated its head, glistening like polished marbles. A small, button-like nose and a wide, toothless grin made it seem almost like a toy, something a kid would cuddle with before bed. Is that real? Ethan muttered, inching closer. The creature stood motionless, staring at us with those big, glossy eyes. It tilted its head to one side, making it look even more comical, like a confused puppy. Maybe it's someone's pet? Jordan suggested, laughing nervously. Or some weird new species. Should we call animal control or something? Mia, always the animal lover, crouched down and beckoned to it. Hey there, little guy. Are you lost? Her voice was soft, soothing. To our surprise, the creature waddled closer, its tiny legs making faint pattering sounds on the dirt trail. Mia reached out her hand, and for a moment, it seemed like the thing was going to let her pet it. But then, it stopped. Its wide grin remained, but something in its eyes changed. A glint of something darker, something unnatural. Mia, maybe don't. I started, but it was too late. Without warning, the creature's expression twisted. The toothless grin stretched wider, unnaturally wide, revealing rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. It lunged at Mia with a speed that none of us could have anticipated, its long arms reaching out and wrapping around her leg. Mia screamed as the creature bit down, tearing into her flesh with a vicious hunger. Blood spurted from the wound, staining the dirt red. Jordan and Ethan rushed to pull it off, but the thing was surprisingly strong for its size. It held on, gnawing and ripping at Mia's leg, as if it hadn't eaten in days. Get it off! Get it off! Mia shrieked, kicking wildly. Jordan grabbed a nearby branch and swung at the creature, landing a solid hit on its back. The creature let out a high-pitched, almost childlike wail, releasing Mia and scurrying backward into the bushes, vanishing as quickly as it had appeared. We scrambled to help Mia, who was now sobbing in pain, her leg covered in blood and puncture wounds. The bite marks were deep, far deeper than anything a small animal should have been able to inflict. We ripped pieces of our clothing to make a makeshift bandage and tried to calm her down, but the damage was done. Ethan pulled out his phone, desperately trying to get a signal to call for help, but there was nothing. We were too deep in the woods. We need to get her back to the campsite, Jordan said, his voice shaky. We've got a first aid kit there. Maybe, maybe we can figure out what that thing was. As we hobbled back, 
carrying me of between us, the woods seemed to close in around us. The trees, once tall and majestic, now felt suffocating, their branches twisting like skeletal fingers above our heads. The air, once crisp and fresh, felt heavy and oppressive. And then we heard it. The same high-pitched wail echoed through the forest, distant but unmistakable. It was followed by rustling, movement, like something was following us. That thing's still out there, Ethan whispered, fear evident in his voice. We quickened our pace, but the rustling grew louder, closer. It wasn't just one sound anymore. It was several. There's more of them, I realized, my heart pounding in my chest. We didn't stop until we reached the campsite, practically throwing Mia down onto the nearest log as Jordan fumbled with the first aid kit. But no amount of bandages could stop the bleeding, and Mia's face was growing pale, her breathing shallow. And then, from the edge of the campsite, we saw them. Dozens of small figures, emerging from the trees, their eyes glistening in the fading light. Each one identical to the creature that had attacked Mia, furry, round, and deceptively cute, with those enormous, unblinking eyes. They're everywhere, Ethan stammered, backing away. They didn't move. Not at first. They just stood there, watching us with those empty, glossy eyes, their tiny hands twitching. What do we do? Jordan asked, his voice cracking. What the hell are they? But there was no time to answer. The creatures suddenly rushed forward, a flood of fur and teeth. They swarmed the campsite, knocking over tents, scattering supplies, and latching onto anything they could sink their teeth into. Ethan screamed as one of the creatures latched onto his arm, tearing into his flesh with the same ferocity as the first one had with Mia. Jordan swung wildly with the branch, but for every creature he knocked away, two more took its place. I grabbed Mia, trying to drag her away, but she was too weak. Her eyes were half-closed, her breathing shallow. I could feel the panic rising in my chest. There was no way out. We were surrounded. The creatures were relentless, their hunger insatiable. Ethan was on the ground now, several of the creatures gnawing at his legs, his screams growing weaker with each passing second. Jordan was still fighting, but he was losing ground fast. And then, just as quickly as it had started, it was over. The creatures vanished, retreating into the trees with their high-pitched wails, leaving behind nothing but blood, torn clothing, and the lifeless bodies of my friends. I stood there, alone in the clearing, the eerie silence settling in once more. The woods were quiet again, the only sound my own ragged breathing. I don't know how long I stood there, frozen in shock, before I realized the truth, the creatures weren't gone. They were watching, waiting, just beyond the tree line. They weren't satisfied yet. 